G'day guys, Aaron here from Shooting Stuff Australia, and once again I'm joined with Jason from the Australian Hunting Podcast down in Sydney. Welcome back, Jace. Thanks, man. And today's topic is all going to be about how to get into long distance shooting, and basically how we started, a quick rundown on the equipment, that basically what we use, and by no means are we professionals in any way or form. We're basically self-taught, and it's all been trial and error for us, but we'll talk a bit bit more about that soon. So before we start, if you could just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you can find both of us on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, also Twitter. Jason uses Twitter. I don't really use it, but we're on all those. It's, uh, all the links are down below, Down also the link to Jason's podcast. But the most important thing, if you could really hit that subscribe button, it'll be awesome to, to boot those subscribers up. So how did we get into long-distance shooting? This is something that we get asked quite a bit. Basically, for me, I was just out hunting, and during the day when you're not really doing much, I just started setting gongs up at longer distances and just started plinking and slowly worked my way out up to one mile and I've had a couple of one mile shots with my 300 rum that I was absolutely stoked about like as a once in a lifetime thing um, and hopefully one day I can redo it again it's just finding the property to get out that far because 1.6 k's is a long way and then um, also up where I film on the farm I was managed to stretch it out to just over a kilometer so you'll see a lot of one kilometer shots on the videos that I make as you guys will know so, and uh, also at Christmas time, if you can go, I'll put the link in the description. Jason and me made a video on shooting a kilometre. Uh, we sort of had a little bit of a shoot off with the Lithgo versus the Tika. So, that was Jason's first time at a kilometre, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, it was interesting. Very fun, though. Lots of fun for sure. Yeah, it's all a bit of trial and error, but once you sort of get it all dialed in, uh, it goes really well. So, how did you get into it, Jason? Yeah, I guess how I got into it, man, was a bit of a mixture. I mean, I remember, I think probably five years ago, maybe when we first met uh, the Rangers in Queensland, we went to, when Marty was on the show, we went and did some shooting on one of his family farms and we shot up right. to, I think about 800 metres, you guys had the rum there. But the main reason was when I was out shooting, I'd maybe go state forest or maybe even some private land and maybe let's say it's thick or even those open style countries. If I want to shoot beyond, say, 100 metres with a particular rifle that I have, anything beyond that was sort of just guessing and i thought to myself well how can i stretch these guns out and actually know what i'm doing and a lot of people say we'll just hold over but most people when you hold over it's just i hold an inch above its back but if an animal's at 500 meters or 300 meters or 800 meters or whatever distance it is how do you know what six inches is at that particular distance so yeah it was a long i guess rabbit hole of trying to learn how to long range shoot getting the data getting the information reloading ballistic calculators, range finders, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to, if I'm shooting at that distance, I want to know what I'm hitting. I want to know the ballistics. I want to be sure I'm going to hit it because if you are going to long range hunt, for an example, well, you need a first round hit. Otherwise, you're going to scare the animal. And if you don't get a first round hit and you don't know what you're doing, potentially could wound the animals as well. So I wanted to basically find out what was beyond that say 150 to 200 you know meters with most calibers using that plex reticle and that's when you get into scopes which we'll uh get into just a little bit later as well man but yeah once you start going down this rabbit hole it uh it made it it just gets so deep it never ends financially um you know everything you know so i'm really enjoying it's not something i thought i'd be interested in but when you start stretching the legs, especially more so, I probably want a long range because I want to be able to long range hunt. But yeah, when you start stretching it out there, it's it's super fun. And people don't realize how far really, you know, you look at a distance, you go, really, that's like 500 meters. It seems much further than that. And you're lobbing a bullet through the air, normally across valleys and and different types of wind, which we're sure we'll talk about a bit later as well. But uh, yeah, man, it's just something that I've never thought I'd be interested in, but I am, man. It's really fun, so. Yeah, it's highly addictive, and I've taken a few people out uh, for the first time shooting long distance and shooting a thousand meters. They just get absolutely hooked when, as soon as they hear that uh, gong ring, uh, yeah. they're hooked. That's it. They uh, they go out and start getting the equipment. And I'll give you. Said, 
It is a give great, me, big long rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, give, I'm gonna say, give me one example. I was on when I was filming my video for the rabbit hunting a, a couple of mo- about a month ago. Uh, one of the guys that was there, he had a new, I think he had a six five Creed more, and he had a new Night Force A Tacker. I think it was. Uh, I think it was a uh, four to sixteen or something like that. And I said, well, you know, you got to get sighted in for shooting the rabbit so you want to make sure you're going to be able to hit so we just quickly did a, a strelock app which is a ballistics app you can get on the app store um installed it he had he was using factory ammo we got it done mate. literally i think in three shots we had him on at 650 meters and he was stoked man he was just wailing on rabbits as well on that video as well on part one of the video the rabbit hunting video that we made so yeah man it's good when you see people get on like that he was excited i think he only had about five shots left and i said well Let's just put the basics into the ballistic app and then hope for the best. And yeah, mate, he wasn't far off on the first shot. We did a bit of a correction and then bang, he was hitting it, I think, on the third shot after that. So yeah, it's good, man. It's good when you can get people on and smack and steal it, you know, it's 650 or 700 meters. Oh, definitely it is. It is. So that's pretty much the uh, sort of way that most people get into it. But if you haven't got access to land, now there is always the long distance clubs around. Uh, They are normally independent clubs different from the uh, organisations, which uh, I dare say they don't really like the long distance stuff. And uh, they some are good, some aren't. Some don't really use muzzle brakes, others do. Uh, some are only contest clubs, so you go along and you can't plink, you just got to shoot the contest. But it is a good way of starting out because the people are really friendly and they will give you advice and sort of steer you in the right direction and show you how to use your equipment uh, to the best knowledge they got as well. And it's always good to start off like that. Uh, first time I got one of my very first rifles was a 2 3 So I went down to a uh, shooting contest, never shot 500 metres before. It's always been semi-autos, close-range stuff, close-range hunting. Uh, so I took my 2 3 it was in an MDT kit, uh, down to the local long-range club, and they had a 500-metre uh, contest. And out of uh, 20-odd people, Never shot that distance before. I managed to get fourth in the contest, which I couldn't believe. First time ever. It absolutely blew me away. They couldn't even believe it either. And they was just using uh, the Remington factory green box ammo, the white and green box, the U- UMC, I think it is. Yeah, right. uh, Yeah, and I couldn't believe it. I even shocked myself. I did not think. I, I, I thought I'd be lucky if I even get near the target. But, yeah, it's pretty wrapped with that. So that's the other way of getting into it. So basically, they're the two ways. The easiest thing is to buy yourself when you're out hunting, uh, just during the day, set up targets at longer distances, start close, work your way out, write down your uh, dope chart as you go. If you don't have a, um, a program for it on your app, uh, is probably the easiest way of getting into it. And so that's pretty much, uh, I don't really know any other way of doing it. You can do long distance courses, which is which are good because everything's easier when someone's there teaching you, isn't it? So I'm looking Absolutely. over your shoulder. Also, too, I think we want to concentrate maybe on this as well as, you know, people that are normally getting, you know, off the shelf rifles. We're not going to probably talk about so much about the real expensive stuff. I mean, we don't have the the high end stuff. We've got sort of medium to high end, but we want to concentrate on what people can get off the shelf, not, you know, uh, you know, custom made rifles and barrels are going to set you back five or 10 grand plus a scope, 10 grand worth of equipment. Yeah, it's not going to be cheap what we've got, but also too, you know, it's, it's not as expensive as it definitely could be. So yes, that's what we want to definitely. concentrate on, off-the-shelf rifles that you can buy, uh, that you can get out there, put a decent sort of scope on them and get some good results. So Yeah, yeah well, uh, we'll start off with uh, the rifles then, which is the main thing, I guess. So a good, well, what I use is a Ruger Precision Rifle, and I do have a custom uh, 6.5 PRC being built right now which is more high-end, it's going to be quite an expensive rifle. So you, as you know, the precision rifle is about two grand. You can put a $1,500 scope on, three and a half grand, you're ready to go. Uh, so to me, that's a lot of money for a lot of people, uh, but you can go cheap. A lot of people do go the Remington 700. Okay, they got absolutely god-awful triggers. You're going to have to swap that trigger out for a Timley or something similar. Uh, but a lot of people do that. If you're going to go that sort of style of rifle, definitely go the heaviest barrel you can get. That's definitely a must. It takes a lot of the whip out of the barrel, and it doesn't heat up as fast. Yeah, and also it depends on what calibers you want to shoot, the expense of them. But you know, you got to, you can yeah. shoot really anything really long range. You know, like you got 
you know, your two to threes, your 22, 250s up to say 400 meters easy, 500 people will shoot them at maybe longer as well. You got yeah. your two, four threes, you got your, your 6.5s. I know Aaron's got the PRC and he's been shooting the 6.5 Creed more. I've got the 260 Remington. A lot of guys using the old Swedish, uh, you know, 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser. Then you got your seven mils and you got your 30 cows. I mean, really just get something that that you want don't be talked into something by no. a person at the gun shop yeah some ballistics probably are better than others but then that comes down to also i think reloading and getting the best out of your reloads too i think if you're going to do long range you don't have to because like no. i said before we got the other guy uh john to a friend of mine on it you know 655 with those you know hornady eld matches factory ammo so no actually that was the eldx actually but still results were really good on those as well so i mean any caliber pretty much will do the job, you know, and, and as Aaron said, depending on what you want to spend on a scope, but, mate, you got Howers, you got Tickers, you got Sowers, obviously, really good quality as well. Um, yep. You know, there's plenty of off-the-shelf rifles, the Ruger Precisions, if you want to spend a bit extra, you know, and each particular brand has its lower end and its higher end, so pick what yeah. you can afford. If it means save up for an extra month to get something better, especially more so probably in the optics side of it, you know, then I probably would, you know. Most standard rifles with good hand loads, um, and I hate to say it, you know, because I know um, that Marty was on the show. He loved his Howards when he was previously on the show. But, you know, guys, I know guys that are hand loading that are buying them to shoot long range and shooting 500 or 1,000, no problem. So, again, yeah. it's just based on hand loads. You could get a dud. You're probably going to get a dud of those more than, say, another another specific, you know, type of rifle. But, well, you know, talking about, cheaper. But. I'm talking about the duds. They can happen even high end. I've yeah. shot a couple of uh, Vitrix and are $14,000 plus. And I tell you what, uh, my mate Vitrix, the magazine, was absolute rubbish. It, uh, when we were shooting out last, it was a video shooting my laptop, my broken laptop at 1,000 metres. And I was using a 300 Win Mag Vitrix, $14,000, one of the most nicest rifles I ever shot in my life. And it just it wouldn't feed out of the magazine. The heat actually swelled it up not made for um, Australian conditions, but this is a military style and it's made for the military sniper rifle. The thing is unbelievable. And the magazine just crapped out and that's 14 grand. Uh, went to the importer. They had no interest in helping him out with the magazine at all. Told him to go buy another magazine. That's yeah. what he got. Absolutely disgraceful. He said, well, you can come and uh, give me money back to the rifle. It's only a rifle. You can go shove it. Said, uh, uh, he'll go buy something else. He's not emotionally attached to it yet. So he said, if you don't supply me with the magazine, uh, you can come and uh, pay me back for the rifle. But that yeah, was a exactly. real shock. That yeah. was a real shock. It doesn't matter which one you buy. You can get lemons in every one. But like I said, if you, exactly. you know, you've got good hand loads, I think hand loading is important. You know, if you yeah. want to shoot long range, getting the best you can, you know, chronographing that load, making sure the velocity variations between your Close reloads are as, are as low as they can be. You know, because I've got a problem right now with my 243. I'm running 70 grain Blitz King, but I'm thinking about going back to the 87 grain VMAX just because it's got better ballistic coefficient. But, you know, sometimes I'm getting a blowout of 100 feet a second on, you know, I'll shoot five that the, the standard deviations under 10 feet per second variation. And then I'll get one that goes 80 and 120 feet per second difference and i'm like well i redid the loads and it's it's done it over three or four hundred rounds so i don't know if it's the brass or the primers or not enough powder or it's a low so that projectile to 70 grains is not really in that twist rate i think of the ticker that i've got varmint it probably should be 80 and above between 80 and 100 so i might go back to the 87 grain v max better bc i think it's like 400 or 0.4 same thing um should be good you know but that's calibers yeah Exactly, and uh, another thing about the calibers while we're on that subject is you've got to choose, it's a fine line. I love my 300 rum, and you've just bought a 300 uh, Win Mag. Yeah. Beautiful, nothing better than dumping in a piece of artillery into your, into your uh, rifle, but it does punish you. If you don't have a muzzle brake, three shots, yeah. you've shot my rum without a muzzle brake, three yeah. shots, you've pretty much had it for the day. Uh, you had enough. <laughs> um, I put the muzzle brake on, uh, and... Man, I could shoot 20, 50 rounds without any problem. It takes it down to like a 308. But the thing is, a lot of people rag on the 6.5s, uh, but they are extremely flat shooting, extremely fast, and bugger all recoil. The biggest thing about long-distance shooting 
is you've got to be comfortable. You've got to find a comfortable round that works for you. You've got to be able to pos and position your body so comfortably. Like a lot of people, when they lie on the ground, they think they're bloody, uh, you know, Chris Carl, a sniper, you've got to lie on the ground, but it doesn't really matter. If you're more comfortable shooting off a bench, my best group was a 100 mil group at 1,000 metres with the Ruger Precision 308. Uh, that was probably a once-in-a-lifetime chance, probably never get it again. I even had a witness there that day, so I can verify it. And I got photos of the entire gong, and you could only just see, and you could see where the group was. But and I got that off a bench. So you got to uh, you got to be comfortable. Don't think you always got to lie down because it does get a bit uncomfortable for a while. If you're lying there in a contest, you could be shooting for like 20 minutes, and you got to be real comfortable and not move and squirm around. That's another big thing. So the caliber selection is very important. Like I just love shooting the rump. There's just nothing like smashing something at a um. What the day I shot 1.6 k's. That was just the the biggest buzz ever ever. I must admit that the I've been you know you've got the a lot of fights between you know 6.5 by 55, 65 Creed more 260. You've got the PRC, which is the precision rifle cartridge, which is the new sort of Magnum 6.5. I'll be keen to try that out. Actually, I think it's really good. But I'm really impressed with these 6.5s. I mean, throw a break on them, they pretty much don't even kick at all. There's more noise than movement, and they are just brilliant to shoot. I remember when me and Aaron, I think it was, we might have been shooting the 308 a couple of years ago, I think, and we were shooting the just the federal blue box, the, uh, what was it, the yeah. lead tips or the soft points, and anything, 500 was good, anything beyond that, and it, it just went to shit real quick. So, again, it's good yeah. reloads, good components, good bullets as well. I mean, Hornady, yeah. Sierra, probably two of the best you can buy, ELD matches if you're you know, shooting long range, ELDXs if you want to go hunting. And a lot of people, even now, I've got I've got the 300 Wim Mag, I bought the Bagara B14 HMR, and I'm going to use the 208 grain ELDMs. And a lot of people are even hunting now, getting good results with the uh, ELD matches as well and getting good, uh, you know, ballistics and good expansion, actually, surprisingly as well, uh, on game at longer distances. You go on If you go on YouTube, you can find heaps about that on uh, ELD matches on game and deer, deer size game, even bigger, woodchucks, uh, rabbits, you know, foxes, things like that. Really good job. So again, having that good ballistic coefficient bullet, and normally that's at the higher end or the heavier end of each caliber. You get better ballistics at the higher end of each caliber. So yeah. same as me, 208. So I think that's going to shoot good. It's going to kick like a bitch. I know that, but I've got a break coming tomorrow, actually. So I was just checking my Australia post apps. I should turn up tomorrow, I'm hoping. so. Yeah, no, that'd be a really good rifle. And it's a Bagara. Finally, Jason... <laughs> got away from those dirty old teakers after all these years i've been telling him and he's finally seen the light so the only reason i hey, the only reason i got rid of that was because like they're not really a true long action and when i was trying to load out the heavy 208s in the 300 wind mag which i bought you just can't do it and you're about 350 thou 300 thou off the land so it's not really ideal so the bagara runs on the aics mags i can load them at close to 35 75 which is 20 20 thou off the lands or max magazine capacity mate no issues chuck it in and go like it, on the ticker i would have had to have it as a single shot and even when i was seating them further out when i was ejecting the bullet as it goes to sort of pop out of the action it wouldn't. The tip would hit the side of the action. You'd actually have to release the bolt from the firearm to get the round out. I was like, nah, selling it, not interested. I've got the 7 mil mag. The other tickers are good, but uh, I'm getting rid of this one. I'm going to get something else. And I've been really impressed with the Bagara. I've really impressed. Like quality, fit, feel, Remington 700 footprint, great. Yeah, I thought I'd never receive a phone call like that in my entire life. <laughs> uh, the when, like, I said Beretta <laughs> owes me money at this point, you know, how much, how much I've spoken about Ticker, you know, yeah. I've, I've made him thousands over the years. You're still, you're still waiting on your commission check. Yeah, uh, still waiting yeah. on your That was a beautiful phone call. Aaron, I've made a mistake buying a Tika. That was <laughs> Not a mistake, just a, uh, you know, so <laughs> anything above that. I mean, I could have seated them at like 33, I think it's 3340, probably would have been okay in that magazine length. It might have shot well. But then, you know, what happens if I ever get it rebarreled down the track and I put a new barrel on and it won't feed properly or it won't it won't shoot with that particular barrel at that particular, you know, distance off the land. So anyway, I'd rather just get rid of it. Man, I lose four or five hundred bucks if I sell it. It's still for sale if anyone's interested. And I've had it muzzle threaded. So contact me if you want a three hundred wind mag. But based on what I just said, they probably won't want it. <laughs> yeah, he's basically giving it away. It'll be fun for hunting. Uh, so uh, before we get into the scopes, we are going to make, if you like these videos, we are going to make 
more of these videos, but we'll pick a piece of equipment or the caliber thing and just do an entire video on it and go more in depth. So this is just going to be a rundown. Yep. So now scopes. Scopes is probably one of the biggest questions as well I always get. Um, to me, you've got to get a, at least a half decent scope because you, you can't hit what you can't see. So I run on my thread of rum and the PRC. I don't know if this is going to stay on the PRC, but the Vortex Razors. The only Vortexes I like and are, are to my eyes worth getting are the Razors because they're made in Japan and they are very nice. 34mm tube, 50mm objective, very nice. Compared to an entry level zero tech, there is a big difference. This is a 30mm uh, tube and a 50mm objective. Now that's just an entry level and this is more a higher end. Of course, you can just keep going up to Schmidt and Bender. Uh, Tangentia, which is uh, I've shot those, but you're starting at seven thousand bucks. Personally, I can't. <laughs> I can't see. I've used them, and I can't really see the difference. I know I don't have great eyes, but to be honest, uh, around the two and a half grand, the three grand is probably as much as I'd spend, and that'll be a very for a very special gun. Now, everyone goes on about the Vortex, and I've had a couple. Uh, the only reason I have the Gen 2 Viper on the Precision Rifle for now is because it's the warranty claim. I had a Gen 1, and it wouldn't hold zero, got it swapped over, paid the difference, and uh, I got the Gen 2. And that's the only reason I got it. Otherwise, personally, I find these Zero Techs, uh, the Australian company ones, just as good as the Vortex, same sort of glass and it basically works just as just as well and they're about five six hundred dollars cheaper for the equivalent uh i've been experimenting a bit with zeiss i got a zeiss on the new 223 hunting rifle and you can use that for uh, long distance shooting because it's got the turrets uh adjustable turrets so it is they are very nice guns and zeiss to me have some of the best glass out there well they own one of the biggest glass companies in the world anyway yeah man it's just there's a lot to talk about, so this is just one I haven't got on my rifle at the moment. This is a, a sort of a newish brand. Uh, they've been around for a while now. It's called Delta, so Delta Striker. This is Delta Optical HD, Striker HD. This one's a 4.5 to 32, so 4.5 to 30 by 56, actually. And it's a 30 mil, 34 mil tube, I should say, and I think it's got about 33 mils of elevation, which is probably half that, obviously, so up and down. Um, but it's it's glass is clear. I like the reticles. Um, you don't really need. I mean, Adam will talk about this for the show. You don't really need a 34 mil tube. But it all depends on how far you're actually shooting. But the 34 mil tubes have more eleva internal elevation, so you can actually get out there. So if you throw on a nice little 20 moa rail or similar, you can get out there easily. Like I'm easily with a 20 moa rail on that one, easily getting over over a kilometer, no problem with that. With the 260 Remington with the 143 grains but you know if you're trying to cross over this is what me and Aaron been talking about a bit if you want to cross over something that's for hunting but also long range shooting you know i do like the some of the 30 mil tubes that are coming out you know you got your yeah your zeiss you got uh, your night force obviously um, i mean there's plenty of scope manufacturers out there and obviously i think spending the money you know on glass is good but anything above about fifteen hundred dollars i think Aaron might disagree, I'm not sure, but it's really 1% to 2% on optics above 1500 bucks. I think. You know, you can disagree, but, you know, yeah. what you're paying for these things is this, is the tracking of this elevation turret and your windage as well. There's no point if you buy something that you can dial and it doesn't go back to zero, then it's it's worthless. It's absolutely worthless. You know, exactly. you can see downrange. It doesn't matter. I've, even, even this is worth now about two and a half grand. Right, if you got a lot of mirage downrange with the heat, it doesn't matter how good this is. It does not matter at iota how good it is because as soon as you zoom in, you're going to get the heat mirage. It's a waste of time anyway. So anything above that fifteen hundred bucks, you're really getting some really good quality stuff, and you want to make sure that it's tracking properly because that's the most important thing. If it's not tracking, it's not worth shit. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, like the good audible. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah. Hang on. Here we go. Yep, good, audible, and solid. You don't want sloppy and it's all mushy, so you can uh, basically yep. count each uh, quarter MOA or yep. eighth MOA. I find that very, very uh, and maybe, helpful as well. 
maybe these are said four and a half to 30. I mean, this is big, right? It's heavy. It's big. It's going to go on a big rifle, heavy varmint rifle. You know, the only really way to shoot them in hunting is to sort of sit on the side of a hill, pull your gun out, drive your car down, down the hill, walk back up and then, you know, basically hope something's going to pop out because, but do you need four and a half to 30? Not really. I see guys that, you know, with four to 16s shooting well up to a kilometer guys, well up to a kilometer. So don't think you need the real high end, high magnification stuff, you know, sometimes three and a half to 18. I think you were talking about Vortex and they just got bought out a, a three, is it three to 18? I think, um, yeah. Razor just came yep. out. So, no, um, yeah, it is. Yeah, the Razor, yep. Uh, well, this Razor here is 5 to 20, and this is what I shot 1.6 kilometres. And I got a got a headshot and a gut shot on a gong, on a torso gong. So that's what I used, and I could still yeah. see it absolutely clear. Cause it, was wound, it was on the rum, it was wound all the way up, then I was holding over half about halfway down the scope from what I recall. It was a few years ago now. But 20 times. A lot of long-distance shooters only use about 10 to 15 times, especially out in the field, because you can see your own hits and uh, spot for yourself. If you zoom right in, it's very hard to spot. Mm. So that's another thing. You don't need to be zoomed right into the target. As long as you yeah. hold onto where you're holding consistently, and everything with long-distance shooting, for what I've found out, is consistent. You've got to aim exactly in the same spot, not waver, not uh, chase the bullet around, uh, hold it exactly. If it starts hitting the gong, just keep aiming in the same spot. Yeah, I find, I find those expensive ones too. Like more of the expensive scopes are like that one. They're all, most of them, all, well, not all of them, but majority of them are all 34 mil. So if you want something in the 30, you know, you can, plenty of brands you can buy, Zeiss, um, Night Force, that sort of thing. They'll do a fantastic job as well. They're still yep. a bit heavy. It depends on, you know, how heavy you are. Leopold VX5 HDs, yep. Zeiss V4s, you know, for more, they're more for hunting. Um, Night Force, you're getting into the heavier stuff. Like I've got a Night Force SHV 4 to 14 by uh, 50, first focal plane. Um, and I've got that on the 300 Wimag Bagara, but I'm thinking about putting obviously the Delta uh back onto that and putting the night force onto something else down the track so but we'll see but you know plenty of options there for you guys i mean this is not something yeah. you're going to want to carry around yeah. you know on a heavy varmint rifle it's possible yeah. but I, I i wouldn't do it you know what i mean be more you know you could probably walk a k or two then you know come back to the car that'd be really as far as you unless you're you know fit as an ox sort of thing but yeah. you know there's plenty of options out there guys don't overscope if you can afford it you're going to get something better quality for the price if you don't go crazy on the on the magnification you know on the on those scopes so yeah, definitely that's another quite a common question i get i want to buy a rifle for long distance and hunting well to me two different rifles hunting rifle as we will we're going to do a show on hunting rifles is uh light as possible you want a yeah. light pencil barrel uh probably fluted and a light scope you don't need a big scope just for your average hunting because most hunting is two to three hundred meters maximum pretty much but i've shot my browning hell's canyon with a vx5 hd uh, 15 times on it and i've got a not some nice groups at a kilometer on the gong with it at 15 times and it's a thin pencil barrel yeah. so it is definitely possible to do it's not easy to do because after three shots with the 3006 um, out of the Hell's Canyon, the barrel is pretty much too hot to even touch. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a hard one. You're not going to really find a proper hunting rifle you can use for um, proper long distance accuracy yeah. at all because there's two totally different things. And there's not many scopes. There's not a huge amount of scopes in that very light uh, no, weight no. category. I think the only two probably preferred was the Zeiss V4 that I just put on my 7mm Rem mag. Um, yep. That's four to sixteen by forty-four, and it's got the it's got the turret uh, elevation turret and capped windage as well, or the the Leopold VX5 HD. But yep. I mean, I think for the price, you know, there's, there's probably the uh, sorry the Zeiss, it's best bang for the buck. I mean, especially with the price hikes have gone up as well. So yeah. you know, you probably can't tell the difference between the two really. Um, oh. Go out there and shoot them and have fun. And you can also shoot long range, so you can get that magnification. You're not really over magnifying anything. Um, it's still very light compared to, say, the other 30 mil models like, you know, Night Force, um, even my, uh, I've got a Cytron S3, 6 to 24 by 50. That's getting on the weightier side too. It's not too bad, but, you know, yeah. weight's a key. Keep the weight down, keep the magnification down. Get a sporter barrel or pencil barrel and, 
you're only going to be shooting one round. First round target hunting, that's going to be your goal. Yeah. Cold barrel, try and hit something at 600 if you've got the skills and you've been practicing. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So there's really, uh, so that's pretty much uh, the basics of how to get into it and a quick rundown of the equipment. You know, um, Jason, you were talking about the precision rifle with those federal. That was actually the video that we made on the Desert Tech, which is a $9,000 bullpup rifle. Beautiful rifle, but once again, this is a very high end rifle, shit ammunition. Couldn't hardly even get an MO group, MOA group at 500 meters. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I swapped it out to hand loads of 6.5 Creedmoor, and uh, we we're getting. I was getting MOA groups at a thousand meters with it without a problem. So we'll talk. Definitely have to do one in the for uh, the ammunition selection and ballistics. Definitely have to do a video on that because there's uh, that is quite detailed and yeah, it's can get quite heated about the uh, caliber wars as well. Just for never forget, once you get yeah. into this, you're not going to have any money left. So if you've got a yeah. wife or kids. Yeah, forget uh, about them. They're gone. <laughs> they're finished. <laughs> as I tell all new shooters, Just your, wait fam until you your, family, life, yeah, your family life is over. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your wife and kids are just a memory. Yeah, just, just don't tell memory. them how much you're going to spend because, I yeah. mean, you can do it on a budget. I know there's some guys on YouTube that I follow. Um, they're using some BDC reticles. Uh, they're using some holdover techniques with, like, scopes with mill dots. I mean, I'll give you an example. Like, I know it's only a 22, but I've got a little T1X 22, and I put a, a 180 buck uh, Hawk scope on it. I think it was a 3 to 9 by 40 just with mill dots on it. So pretty much once I hold over beyond the mill dots, like obviously I can't go beyond that, but that basically shoots for me out to about 160, 155, 160 meters. Even my mate, we were shooting on that property probably a month ago and I had a rabbit gong, my ding, ding with that 22, made it 155 meters. I mean, he's, and he was shooting it for about 10 minutes and couldn't hit it. And I was like, bing, 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 bing. So, you know, you don't have to go expensive. You don't have to. And I'll be surprised, man, that, that $108 scope, I've had guys look through it and they go, geez, it's bloody clear, isn't it? And I go, it's not bad. And then all I do is go to max magnification because it's second focal plane. That's where the reticle uh, is linked up to the scope, you know, so as in that's, it's, it's correct at that distance. Hold out. I got the little ballistic app for 15 bucks, Mate, I'm shooting him and hitting him at those ranges. No problem whatsoever. Anything beyond 160 will then... I'm a bit screwed, but again, you get some big calibers like that and you want to hold over with mill dots and you're confident in the gun, but you can probably get those bigger calibers out to six, 700 metres, no problem. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But we, yeah, we'll definitely have to do one on other calibers. In fact, I think if you guys like this and want to set, we'll just break down shooting into extremely small groups of topics like, like stocks and rifles and you know, another thing is the bipods. Big thing is bipods. Uh, yeah. We both run Atlas. We both tried every single brand known to man from eBay specials to uh, to Harris, and we both have ended up with Atlas, and you can't go past the Atlas. The Bosco Bell, the Australian-made ones, are very good as well. I put them on par with Atlas. but yeah. uh, And we just we both own one Atlas, and we just take it off and swap it onto each rifle, yeah. which is the best way. Okay, you are paying up to 500 bucks for it, but and that's going to last your lifetime. I, I normally put the little... Uh rails on the bottom of them you can yeah. buy them on the internet atlas rails or similar picatinny rails little one inches or two in one and a half inches whatever they are um because if you've got a different type of stock you've got if you've got the quick release sling swivels and you don't need to put like a sling on there so you just meant i just drill them in mate put them in done and you can swap that you know that uh, uh atlas bipod to any particular rifle you want really good man like bang what in quick release bang on another rifle done ready to go same thing we're going to mention probably you're not sure if you're going to mention it is you know good set of binoculars good range finder yeah. it's another some very yeah. important stuff there some uh, having a ballistics calculator so you actually know what you're doing you're not just guessing like i know yeah. if i'm shooting a distance it's that far. I'm not a professional, but I'm confident I'll be shooting at this stage to 600 metres on game, um, especially with the bigger calibres and like for the 260 and stuff. Can't wait to get the 300 working if we could actually go to the bloody range. But, um, yeah. yeah, there's important things and not, not skimping out on the range finder too because I had a real cheap one one time and I was shooting behind the animals in front because the, the beam – was way too big at distance. So I was picking up the dirt in front of it, shrubs, leaves, trees, and stuff like that. You need a good one, you know, very good one, you know, sour, 
Uh, you'd probably like us, obviously. Any of those good high-end brands, you know, it's probably above 600 bucks. You're going to get a good one. It's going to last you a long time if you look after it. And, you know, that's important because I was, you know, if you're not if you're not getting the real distance of where you're shooting, you're wasting your time, man, because you just be yeah. chasing your tail all the time. Yeah, you can't guess it, especially at those distances. Uh, that's for sure. We'll definitely be going into all that in the accessory video, I yeah. dare say. Yep. So we'll wrap this one up. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, how you can get into it. And you don't have to spend a ton of money if you don't want to. So, yeah, well, if you like these videos, give us a comment. Tell us what you shoot uh, for long distance or long distance hunting as well. Uh, tell us your rig. Uh, it would be interesting to hear about it, and we'll talk about it as well. What we see in the comments, we'll probably bring that up and talk about other people's rigs as well. Yeah, one thing, so, too, we're probably going to try and tell them about maybe we are going to attempt because uh, we're doing something positive here. It's yeah. away from our regular programming of yeah. – uh, things we normally say, so we're trying to get, get a bit more upbeat, a bit more positive, is uh, we can probably might even do some live streaming, tell them about that, so you guys can yeah. get involved and, and, and put comments and questions and all that sort of stuff and basically be involved in the channel, not just us making videos and, you know, you guys commenting after the fact. Yeah, we're thinking about doing a weekly live stream and we'll just talk about anything that you guys want to talk about for about an hour or so, an hour, hour and a quarter, once a week. We'll probably be on a weeknight. We haven't nailed down what night, but we'll try and keep it pretty consistent each week um or the weeks that we're not away on holidays or doing something but we'll try and bring something each week so we'll answer any questions you want but we're just trying to sort out a computer program right now that is actually going to work for us so once we've got that nailed down we will uh be starting that probably be a midweek sort of a show so yeah. that should be good so definitely keep keep an eye out for that and definitely make sure you subscribe and go and check us out on our Instagrams and Facebooks. And we're also on Patreon if you want to donate to that. Both of us are on there. All the links are down below. And we'll put the link to the long-distance video that Jason and me made. Uh, that'll be in the description as well. So thanks a lot, guys, for listening to this. And we will definitely see you on another one in a few days' time. Catch ya.